Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for our first COVID-19 briefing of many. I am committed to holding these updates on a regular basis. Uh, we will start uh, with the numbers. And I want us to all remember that these numbers are not just numbers, that these are lives and families and communities that are impacted by this pandemic. Uh, as of yesterday, yesterday, December the 8th, Baltimore has had 26,000 589 reported casing, cases uh, with 366 people hop, hospitalized with COVID-19. And we unfortunately have lost 552 people. Our nation, as you know, is continuing to report record high numbers of COVID uh, cases, surpassing what we saw even over the summer. Uh, our cases here in Baltimore have steadily increased for a month and a half at a rate surpassing the increases in testing. Our test positivity rate, our average number of daily deaths, and the number of hospitalizations are all at their highest level since last spring. Uh, this raises concerns around our healthcare system's ability to handle the massive influx of COVID-19 patients. Based on our current trajectory of cases and hospitalization, projections show that our hospitals will be overwhelmed if we do not act. I wanted to start off by saying that first and also highlight today that we are joined uh, by folks who will be guiding us as we go through this, our public health professionals. Uh, of course, starting with our health commissioner, Dr. Jaraza. Uh, we're also joined today uh, by Dr. Michelle Gordine, uh, Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President of Population Health and Primary Care at the University of Maryland Medical System. Dr. Tom Inglesby, Director of the Center for Health Security at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, Dr. Peter Hill, Senior Vice President of Medical Affairs at Johns Hopkins Health System. And we are also joined today by Police Commissioner Michael Harrison, uh, Fire Chief uh, Niles Ford, and Chief Charles Savela, Acting Director of the Office of Emergency Management. The health and safety of Baltimoreans is my top priority. And as I said yesterday, I will not waver or hesitate to make decisions that save lives in Baltimore. Also, as I said yesterday, our decisions must be and will be guided by the science and our public health officials. Uh, to that end, today I am announcing increased restrictions in Baltimore City that will go into effect Friday at 5 p.m and we'll walk through these very slowly. Indoor gatherings at public and private facilities, private homes, and any public space will be limited to no more than 10 persons. Outdoor gatherings at public and private facilities will be limited to no more than 25 persons. Sports gatherings at facilities controlled by recreation and parks will be prohibited. Uh, re religious facilities shall not exceed 25% of that religious facility's maximum capacity. Retail establishments and malls will be capped at 25% of their maximum capacity. Indoor recreation establishments will be closed. This includes cigar and hookah bars, as well as adult entertainment venues. Outdoor recreation establishments will be capped at 25% of their maximum capacity. Personal service establishments will be capped at 25% of their maximum capacity. Staff uh, at these facilities must wear uh, face coverings at all times while indoors. Services must be provided on an important only basis. And a log uh, must be kept of names of customers, staff providing services, and everyone else who enters the shop for contract tracing uh, purposes. Fitness centers will be capped at 25% of their maximum capacity. The casino will be capped at 25% of the maximum capacity uh, with uh, uh, no food and drink. M museums, the zoo, and the aquarium will also be capped at 25% maximum capacity. Uh, theaters and outdoor entertainment venues will be closed. Food service establishments will be closed to indoor and outdoor dining. However, carry out delivery and drive through service may continue. Uh, we understand and we know that our restaurant industry has been 
one of the hardest hit by this pandemic. Uh, the city has been uh, proactive in seeking ways to support our restaurant community. Uh, in the first two rounds of grants totaling $5.5 million, the city through BDC has awarded 235 grants uh, totaling uh, $2.8 million to restaurants, uh, carryout establishments, bars, and taverns in the city. 30% of these grants went to businesses that received zero, uh, let me say that again, zero federal or state funds intended to provide relief for small businesses. By next week, uh, BDC will start awarding an additional $6.5 million in grants from the state of Maryland to support Baltimore's uh, restaurants and public markets. More than 300 additional restaurants will receive uh, this new grant assistance. For the 205, 35 that have been awarded so far today, 145 of them, 62%, are women-owned. Uh, 176 of them, 75% are minority-owned, and 155 of them, 66%, are owned by Baltimoreans. This is exactly what I mean when I talk about equity in our city. As I stated yesterday in my inaugural remarks, when it comes to the well-being of our residents, uh, I am not afraid to do the right thing over the popular one. Uh, this is about saving lives. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm instituting these restrictions today for the public health of the residents of Baltimore. I am committing to you, uh, the people of Baltimore, that I will be here every week to bring you the necessary information as we continue to battle this pandemic with the hope that you will make informed decisions for you and your family. I hope all residents uh, in Baltimore are taking advantage of the resources that are available at coronavirus.baltimorecity.gov. Uh, their residents can find real-time data. Uh, I actually have it up on my computer at all times uh, for real-time data as well as the information about where they can get tested. Baltimore, we're still in a pandemic. And uh, to be quite honest, some of us aren't acting like it. And I know uh, that COVID fatigue is real and has begun to settle in on many, but we must remain vigilant. Uh, please be very clear. COVID doesn't get tired. COVID doesn't take days off and COVID doesn't care uh, how you want to go back to normal. It is actively looking to infect us all. We need all residents and visitors to act accordingly. Always wear your mask when you're out in public. Be mindful of your distance to others and wash your hands often. We are in that time of the year where risks are going to increase. The weather is getting colder, the holidays are coming up, and people want to spend more time together indoors. And I want this, this to be something that everyone has to understand. The majority of the cases we're seeing are from indoor and family gatherings. We need to be even more cautious to keep our loved ones and our neighbors from getting sick and dying. As I said the other day to someone, a uh, safe uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa is better than not having your family member for the one for next year. Uh, that's how serious this is. And I also want to be clear to uh, my generation. Uh, the age range between 20 and 39. We are driving the numbers. And we may not be the ones dying, as only 11 people in that age range are, but the reality is is that we can spread it to others. Think about our parents and grandparents' generation. Think about how they are dying by the hundreds. And your inability or unwillingness to make the sacrifices necessary or act responsibly as an adult can mean that your grandmother, your father, your grandfather will not be here for you. Uh, that's how serious this is. That hookah bar can wait. That brunch can wait. We have to keep our family and our people that we love alive. If we want to stop the surge in cases, we have to be cautious and change our behaviors now. I will work with Commissioner DeRaza and our public health experts that you see with us today and others to review the data and determine when it will be safe to loosen these restrictions or if needed to institute more. We are preventing deaths and illness by making decisions based on data and public health guidance, nothing else. I want to thank our residents who have followed the public health guidance and we will continue to monitor the daily information. Also, 
of Baltimore as we deal with this pandemic. I want to remind you to get your flu shot. It's more important this year than any other year. Don't take chances with your life or the life of your family members. Get your shot today. And now I'm asking Dr. DeRaza to update you on Baltimore City's COVID response and how we are uh, supporting residents and families in our city. Dr. DeRaza? Thank you, Mayor Scott, for beginning your tenure with the focus on the health and safety of Baltimore City residents in both words and actions. Baltimore, since the pandemic begun, we have reviewed detailed charts, graphs, and maps outlining the city's case data. We've deployed our mobile testing teams to areas where they are needed most. We've urged residents to pick up their phone for contact tracing teams and to answer honestly in an effort to link cases, identify outbreaks, provide education, and prevent further spread of disease. I have warned of the consequences if social distancing, mask wearing, and harm reduction guidelines were not followed. Our hospital capacity would be strained our fatality rates would increase, and the number of new cases would continue to rise. We have made case information and data on COVID-19 disparities publicly available so that individuals and families can remain up to date about cases in Baltimore City and hopefully use that data to reinforce harm reduction guidance at home. Despite all of the work and combined efforts of healthcare staff, first responders, clinicians, epidemiologists, nurses, doctors, school health aides, trusted messengers, and contact tracers. This past month, we saw the highest number of new COVID cases since the pandemic began. We know that hospitalizations and fatalities are lagging indicators, rising more slowly, but just as steadily. And if previous trends continue, we expect December to be one of the deadliest since the pandemic began. Despite our best efforts to urge people not to travel, it's very likely the increase of testing in the last week of November correlated with residents who travel to be with friends and family over the Thanksgiving holiday. Subsequently, I would expect to see continued increase in new cases due to COVID exposure during travel sometime over the next few days, at a time when our hospitals are already at 85% of their maximum capacity. In July, we were concerned with the rise of cases when our seven day average was 146 new cases per day and we re-implemented phase one restrictions. Yesterday, our average number was 223 new cases per day. Over the course of the pandemic, we have expressed concern of positivity rates in specific zip codes, such as 21224 and 21215, that have consistently remained above 5%. In the last four weeks, with the exception of four zip codes, every single zip code in the city has a positivity rate higher than 5%, and several approach 10%. We have entered a phase in the pandemic where contact tracing, a longtime public health tool that supports our ability to track the spread of COVID-19, is challenged to keep up with the number of new cases identified each day. What our contact tracing information does give us is a good sense of where people have been during the time in which they were exposed to COVID-19, even if we can't always identify clear causes in every case. As a result, we know there is widespread community transmission in Baltimore City meaning COVID-19 is found throughout the community and can be spread by people who appear to be well. In fact, up to 50% of cases of COVID are spread by someone without any symptoms. We also know that some of the drivers of COVID-19 spread are activities which bring groups of people together for prolonged periods of time, inability or lack of mask wearing or social distancing, and indoor spaces, specifically those with poor ventilation. To slow the exponential spread of COVID-19, our interventions aim to decrease the number of contacts individuals have during their infectious period. Targeting our interventions to the highest risk activities will help provide the biggest reduction in high risk contacts. While our cases remain higher than they've ever been before, we have learned over the past 11 months that targeted interventions work. In late July, we saw a similar rise in cases and in early August, we implemented similar limitations on occupancy and gatherings. A few weeks later, we saw decreases in new cases throughout late August and early September. Armed with that information, to do nothing would be the same as conceding defeat to the coronavirus. The increased restrictions for Baltimore City are designed to help reduce the burden on our healthcare system and to curb the rising number of new cases. We have not had to implement such severe restrictions since the earliest days of the pandemic and the implementation of the stay-at-home order. 
unfortunately, with the volume of new cases that we are seeing and the implications this growing caseload has on hospital utilization during a period of widespread community transmission, even with a mask order in full effect for the past few months. Activities such as eating, drinking, and smoking in close proximity to others not in your household should not continue. Finally, I urge residents not to travel for Hanukkah or Christmas and to celebrate with your immediate household, checking in with your loved ones by phone or virtually. While part of our goal is to protect our healthcare system from a potential surge, our ultimate goal is to save the lives of city residents. We all have a part to play in achieving that goal. Please continue to follow the public health guidance to keep yourselves, your loved ones, and your neighbors safe and healthy. I urge everyone to practice social distancing, frequent hand washing, and mask wearing, and please stay home if you're not feeling well. Please reduce activities outside of the home and avoid activities with others outside of your immediate household. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jaraza. Uh, next, uh, we will uh, invite Dr. Inglesby uh, to come up to the podium. Dr. Inglesby? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioner DeRaza. I think it's important and right for you to be taking new steps to control the pandemic in Baltimore. Across the country in the last two weeks, COVID cases have been rising in 40 states including our own. The U.S. is now seeing more than 200,000 new cases of COVID every day. The number of deaths in this country has tripled in the last seven weeks, with more than 2,000 people dying every day in America from COVID. Last week, COVID was the number one cause of death in America. There are more than 100,000 people hospitalized with this disease in the country, with every day, nearly every day, bringing record highs in hospitalizations. And there are stories from around the country of hospitals being pushed close to the edge or beyond it, with healthcare workers exhausted or overwhelmed, some of whom are becoming sick and some who are dying from this disease. While we've done better in Maryland than many states and better in Baltimore than many cities, we are not invulnerable to this virus. The number of COVID cases here is rising and the deaths are rising as well. In Maryland yesterday, we saw the number of hospitalizations jump in with highest numbers, highest daily new numbers than we've seen in a long time. Hospitals in our state have done a great deal to increase capacity and to prepare for the surge that is with us now, but they all eventually will have their limits, which is why it's critical to slow the spread of this virus down the light at the end of the tunnel is the likely start of a vaccination program this week, but it will take months of substantial numbers of people to get vaccinated and months to have an impact on the rate of spread of this pandemic in our state and in our city. In the meantime, we all need to do our part to physically distance, wear masks, avoid large gatherings. We need the help and direction of elected officials to temporarily close settings that are most likely to speed up the spread of the virus. What happens in the next few months is up to all of us. The people in this city and state working together with our elected leaders to lessen the toll of this virus in the time before widespread vaccination helps us turn the corner. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ingersby, and thank you to all of the medical professionals who have been uh, working tirelessly to protect the public and our city, uh, Baltimore, uh, let's be smart and not take risks with our health and with our family's health. I recognize uh, the sacrifices that everyone has made to this point, but we can't let up now. Uh, we have to be as vigilant today and continue to slow the spread. I want everyone to do that. Uh, thank you and stay safe. And now we'll take a few questions. Uh, yes, I think that that will be very helpful and uh, I know I'll be meeting and speaking with the governor in the coming weeks and we'll make sure that that is a part of the agenda. Mayor Scott, what do you say to... Um, I can't hear you. you got to speak up a little bit. Sorry. It's okay. What do you say to minimum wage workers, wage workers, uh, especially as we approach the holidays, they're likely going to lose their job if they still have it right now. Some of these federal assistance is going, they're going to expire at the end of this year. What do you say to them? 
Well, listen, we, we say that uh, we know this is hard. We know that here in the city we put up uh, assistance for folks and rental assistance. We know that the federal government has put up some. And we also understand uh, that we're going to now have a functioning federal government with uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris and know that we'll be working with them to get relief to residents and citizens, not just here in Baltimore, but across the country. But for us, we again, uh, you heard it not just from me, but from public health professionals, the folks who are leading this work, not just here in Baltimore, but across the world. This is the right thing to do because this is about saving lives. We know how tough it is. We're going to, as I said, we've done a lot to support and going to continue to try to support our businesses, but we have to keep people healthy and alive. And I will not, uh, I will not go against the advice and the guidance of the folks who understand this better than anyone else. And we will work uh, twice as hard to get people the help that they need. Yep, he said, uh, so uh, his question was about uh, the zip codes and seeing the spice consistently, wanting to know about enforcement. Uh, yes, yeah, so a few things. One, uh, the health commissioner and the health department has done a great job of communicating. We'll be uh, ramping those things up and trying to communicate with folks in an even more direct and better way. Enforcement, uh, we will be looking at all of the options that we have. Uh, for everything that's going on. We know that we've had incidents in places that we should not have had, and we'll be talking to make sure that we are doing things that are making sure that everyone, residents, business owners alike, understand how important this is, and we will enforce things. We know that the state is assisting in the enforcement as well, but we will do things with, with the utmost integrity, but also a focus on trying to educate people first before being punitive. I do think that it will be useful to uh, increase restrictions on the highest risk settings in Maryland, given the rising numbers. And uh, I think, um, obviously, there are many decision makers in this in this in the state. Uh, and I think it would be useful, as we've seen in other parts of the country, for us to consider more restrictions on the things that we know make a difference. Restaurants and bars are important and other places where people are closely interacting without masks. I think those are places we know where there is highest risk of transmission. Last one. Yes, ma'am. Um, two parter. Uh, Dr. Zaraza will uh, talk about the question is about that we have data to show uh, if bars and restaurants are where where, where uh, the cases are coming from and uh, about uh, the casino. So as I mentioned, a lot of our contact trace, tracing data really points to where individuals have been during the time when they could have contracted COVID. So high risk settings or um, high risk gatherings um, and certainly bars and restaurants are, are all a part of that list. Um, many individuals are also traveling, we know, to other retail establishments and workplaces. Um, but as Dr. Inglesby mentioned, what we do know is, generally speaking, bars and restaurants, because you're not wearing a mask, you're eating and drinking, you're staying indoors, maybe for longer periods of time with people outside of your household, um, are higher risk settings. So uh, remember, the casino is going from 50% capacity to 25% with no food and drink. So folks will not be in there taking off their mask. And let me be very clear. If uh, Dr. Zaraza and the, and, and the health department uh, con we continue to show that that's a problem, we will not be afraid to go for any further. We will follow the advice of the public health professionals. But they're at 50% now with food and drink. We know that food and drink 
like bars and restaurants, create an opportunity, a more at-risk opportunity. They're going to 25 with no food and drink for now. This, All of this will be assessed over the next few weeks to see what we have to do moving forward. Thank you, everybody.